Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is episode 18 of your Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode as today we're in into a pretty big episode as we're at the 2024 free agency day as we're looking to massively uh, bulk up the Columbus Blue Jackets and make another playoff push. But before I get into that, I'd like to just say if you are new to the channel, make sure to stop that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. That'll be very much appreciated boys so let's get into today's episode as we got a lot of work to do uh it's not just a little bit it's a lot of work that we gotta do so uh we gotta you know resign some players you know development wise for the columbus blue jackets we look like a very good team right now of course our status is seller which is not um we're not a seller it's just because our team is very young you look at the team we are a very young team of course you know the rules we have to at least have, you know, three players over 30 years old, which I seem to always forget this rule. I remember everything else but for that rule. Um, last year, we just had 30 or I uh, just had uh, three players that were over 30 years old coming into this year right now. I don't think we currently have any players that are over 30 years old. So that means we need to, of course, get three players that are over 30 years old. And also, we have a lot of big questions going into next year. Um, you know, our defense looks basically the same. I was looking at maybe making that Bone Brian video, uh, move off video. Um, and we could make a very massive deal. And we can. But I, I think the thing right now is that we're going to play a patient. And the reason why that we're going to be playing a patient is because of Patrick Laine. Um, Patrick Laine is expiring uh, this next year. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. We're not going to have any control of his rights anymore. Uh, he's going to be a free agent. And that's kind of a scary thing for us because when I looked at this extension, it was bonkers. First off, one year for $11.6 million is a lot just for one year. But then, you know, you bump it up. And you're like, oh, man, $12 million. Oh, man, what? And then you just keep going up to a max contract, which comes up to $18 million if you want to sign to an eight-year deal. Just, what? It's absolutely bonkers what Patrick Liney is asking for. And even then, when you look at Warren Fogle and the other players, like, even look at how much Warren Fogle wants right now. $9.3 million for the next six years on, you know, one year of good performance. Uh, for Warren Fogle. So it's a bit scary right now as a GM here for the Columbus Blue Jackets because we're going into some very uncharted territory for this team where we're going to have to start locking up some players to some big deals and we're going to have to start worrying a little bit more about the salary cap. Now, we do have a lot of young snipers, so if it ends up where we do not are, are not able to sign Patrick Liney, then while well, we have Burek Shren and we have Marichenko and we got Retro Magrado and we got Chinkinov, right? We got guys that can take over that spot if need be. Now, we don't want to lose Liney. Liney has been on the team for a few years now. He's won the Maurice Richard. He's been ever so much growing here with the Columbus Blue Jackets over the past four years. We had him that three year, $7 million deal. We knew that there was going to be a big payday coming. The guy puts up almost, he's put up 250 goal seasons for this team. Most of them, they've been over 30 goals. Most of them have been over 40 goals. So only one really bad season for Patrick Line. And even then, it wasn't even the worst season for Patrick Line. So Line has been a massive producer for this team. And him wanting $18 million is a lot of money. And I don't even know if we could really afford that moving forward. So we're going to, you know watch line a over this upcoming season we're going to keep an eye on line a um and what we do next with line a is going to be a big question because um you know i don't want to be paying them that much honestly uh we don't want to be paying the guy that amount of money so uh the plan with this year's free agency of course as you guys all know with the last one was to bulk up the defensive core uh, that was a big thing uh, in the last one is that we wanted to bulk up the defensive core. Since we're not able to really improve it, why not pick up guys that are going to make us look a lot deeper? Like the Philadelphia Flyers. You look at them, you know, they didn't have a lot of strong defensemen, but what made them good was that they had a deep defensive core, right? They didn't go very far, but if we're able to bring in some veteran leadership guys, like, for example, a Christopher Tanoff. This was the guy that I was looking at before. Um, now, he's been kind of up and down. He hasn't really been healthy from what it looks like. I mean, he's been traded a decent amount uh, once you get down to the nitty-gritty. But 
Uh, this past season, he only played about 24 games, played a lot of the year in the AHL. So I, I believe we can get this guy back up and going because he, he's playing a very physical game. He's not the most physical defenseman in the world, but his defensive game is very solid, and I think he could be a great top six defenseman uh, this upcoming season here for uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. And we're going to be signing him to you know a $3 million deal, so that means we do have to spin the wheel, which I forgot to mute the wheel, but we do got to spin that sucker. Um, and I think we'll sign him to like a 3.05 million dollar deal he wants a full-blown no movement clause which we will give 10 of that full-blown no movement clause i don't care it's only for a year and then i think we'll do the same for brady shea which is another defenseman that i want to bring in i uh, i think he's going to be a perfect fit alongside of christopher tanev reason why um offensively he's going to be a good defenseman he could pass the puck really well defensively no he's not the strongest defensive guy in the world but i'm looking at his offensive skills and saying this guy could be a really 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 solid top six guy for us he's played you know top six minutes and has been able to throw up about 30 so points so if he can do that for us at a top six role that is perfect for me and he only wants that wow i thought he was gonna want a little bit more money than that so hopefully he signs at that three million dollar mark uh, i'm hoping he does because if he could get both brady shea and tan at three million dollars that'll be perfect for me that's a good top six pair he wants a full-blown no movement clause as well i'm fine at giving him that because this is what i want our top six to be is both tanov and brady shea going into next season so uh and they're only at one year deals so now depth offensively uh, we need a lot of depth offensively. We lost a few guys. Uh, Nikushkin, of course, we lost because of the money he was asking for. We didn't want to give it to him. I think we lost a few other guys uh, just because of age. Uh, so the guys I wanted to go with, of course, first off is Jordan Greenway. Uh, I wanted another physical power for it to bring on to the team uh, and just to make us more physical depth-wise. And he plays a pretty solid defensive game as well. Uh, his playoff stats, I don't think are too bad. I didn't really check this out. Um, no, it's not terrible, but I think we could make him into a good playoff guy especially his physicality is just going to be you know instrumental uh moving forward now i did not spin the wheel on him so it's all depending on what you know his deal will be depending on what his will decide will be so it will be a full-blown no movement clause once again these guys and they're no movement clauses so we'll give greenway just a one-year deal 3.5 million dollars uh, just because I don't want to, you know, lock myself into a guy that we will regret. And then Oob Kubel, we don't have to worry about him. This was the other guy that I was going to be picking up. A uh, two-way forward, uh, right winger, can play that fourth line, third line. And the reason why is his defensive game is so incredible. Uh, 90 defensive awareness, 87 shot block, and st uh, 96 stick checking. This guy is a defensive beast. He hits, does everything you need him to do. Uh, playoff performer, not bad, not terrible. Puts up a few goals. I want to lock this kid up for four years at um, 2.725 for the next four years. I believe he could be an instrumental part for our depth moving forward. And if we have to trade him, we'll trade him. So those are the four guys that we are bringing onto the squad here for the columbus blue jackets those are the four guys that i believe will be you know big guys of the team moving forward uh you know we could have went after sebastian ahu who just would have made our team you know a hundred times better but looking into it you, you we got future guys that we could go off and trade a cheaper guy for i almost did a trade with colorado avalanche thinking about picking up gabriel laniscog and bone brian and sending back samuel gerard and retro magrado uh for one of those guys but i i was like i gotta play a patient here but you know that's a trade that we could possibly do in the future if we need to right so uh, coaching stuff we really don't need to worry about scouting staff i don't think we really need to worry about either but we could hire uh four guys for the team to fill up the rest uh the usa here will sign uh troy keeler and then uh give this guy another contract as well uh i think the oh wait yeah the juniors all filled up we could use another one here and the nordic and then also up in europe we could use another one as well so there we go so that should be all good to go here for the columbus blue jackets the team should be ready to go if we get all the guys that we want of course aiden hill detroit wants aiden hill which of course we cannot trade away aiden hill unless they are uh, a team that were on top of the division which we should check out here right quick because we do have a decent amount of guys that do have a no trade clause so we could trade the teams like carolina tampa bay 
Winnipeg, and Vegas Golden Knights. So Vegas, Winnipeg, Tampa Bay, and Carolina. Uh, we could trade to those teams. But I'm not really focused on trading. I'm just honestly focusing on having a, just a very quiet off season. Honestly, that's kind of like the plan that I'm having with is just go very peacefully throughout free agency. We had a really good year last year. Tanev does not want to sign with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He wants to go to a team that has a win-now situation. Brady Shea signs with us, which is good. Oob Kubel signs with us. But we lose the big guy that we really wanted in Christopher Tanev, who I thought was going to massively improve our defensive core, and we did not get the guy that we wanted. So that is a huge bummer for us moving forward, and now we kind of have to go with a plan B. Colin Miller fits all the defensive pairings. He's not real physical, though. I was thinking more of a defensive defenseman would fit this team perfectly. But now we're, uh, I mean, Adam Larson. I think Adam Larson, actually, I, I do like an Adam Larson. 19 points for Chicago there. Blocks a lot of shots. We also got Nikita Zaitsev here as well. Damn it. I hate how it goes to the top. I cannot believe EA did not fix that glitch. That is ridiculous. That was left there the entire time. So Zaitsev... Or Adam Larson, basically it is, between these two guys. It's either you go with Nikita Zaitsev, who doesn't put up as much blocks as he used to, or Adam Larson, who's been putting up some decent numbers. I think I think we go with Adam Larson, two-year deal. You get him at 2.475. I think we could actually get him for three years. We could do the same thing with him. We're, we're going to keep him. Might as well. He's going to be a good defenseman. So $2.4 million for the next three years, I think, for Adam Larson. I think that'll be well worth it. Uh, it's a defensive defenseman we need, and there's not a lot of good defensive defensemen out here. So if we could get him, then perfect, we can get him. So hopefully we can get the rest of the guys joining Greenway signs with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and then hopefully we should be getting Adam Larson here in the next little bit, and then that should be it for free agency. There we go. We also get Adam Larson as well. So the Columbus Blue Jackets are now practically filled up. We still have $16 million in our cap space which we can still go in and spend but i think the way that i'm thinking here is i want to save that salary cap for the big players that we got to pay in the next year fogel greenway a ton of guys that we got to pay up here in the next little bit like even in the next two years we're paying guys so i think playing smart with the money right now is the way to go especially since what we only got really 10 million dollars left in our salary cap because remember we we have to keep at least five mil free so I've been kind of patient with my salary cap a little bit more than usual. Uh, so looking at the team going forward, we got Foodie, Line A, Fogel, McCann, Bjorkstrand, Merchenko, Greenway, Johnson, you know, Uv Kubel maybe, and then Chinkinov, Magrado, Texier is basically what the depth will be going into next year. And then also you got Benino down there as well. You got some nice depth. So I think that's the way we're going to go with the offensive core. Uh, we got how many 30-year-olds? I, I forgot that Oob Kubel is not a 30-year-old. God, no. Is, is, hang on. Larson is a 30-year-old. So we already got two 30-year-olds. So that's going to be a big issue going into next year. We actually need another 30-year-old to play on this upcoming roster. And uh, I think we're going to have to deal away somebody. And I actually don't mind doing this. I think we're going to do it in the next video, though, I think is what we will do once we get up to the season. We'll go off and get another 30-year-old because we need a 30-year-old, of course, for this offensive core. Unless Bjorkstrand hits 30 coming up into the season. But um, we're going to have to worry about that. Uh, I also want to like to check out Liney again, seeing how his extension's doing. We're going to have a lot of talks with him. I think we're going to deal with him in the um in the uh the the preseason i think is what we'll do and i think that i think i think that's it I, I don't think we're gonna have to do anything else i think we got everyone a nice deals right now um and the reason why we're not gonna be spending any more money than that i think is because we're gonna lock up everyone if we can lock up people then we're gonna lock them up like warren fogel I'm not going to lock up Warren Fogel yet. He is kind of a big question because he had an amazing season this year, and I'm not doubting the season that Warren Fogel had this year, but how well will he do in a second year of maybe playing with somebody else? Or will he have another good season with Liam Foody and Patrick Line will be the will be the biggest question. So I'm interested to see how well Warren Fogel will do in this upcoming season. Uh, Line A and his extension talks on how well that will go. Will we maybe trade away Patrick Line A to go after somebody else that has more, you know, cap control? Because we gotta play very smart with this team. We know we you know we're not a Detroit Red Wings. We're not a Chicago Blackhawks where, you know, 
we entice players to come play here, right? We'd even entice Christopher Tanev to come play here, right? So we're not a big enticing team for a lot of players. So, um, I mean, we're just becoming that now because of the team that we're actually starting to build up. We're looking like a tank. But there's not a lot of players that want to come and play in Columbus, Ohio, right? It's not the most beautiful city in the world. So um, especially for a guy like Line A, does he want to stay here forever is the biggest question. So yeah, Line A, Bjorkstrand, Rowenski going with those guys. I already set the captains. I don't want to. Done. So let's take a look at this upcoming season here of your Columbus Blue Jackets uh, and the way that this team looks. Uh, McCann. So yeah, so this is your 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 top six basically is this. Line A, Bjorkstrand, Booty, McCann, Vogel, and Marichenko. Nothing could change about it. We have to keep it that way. Kent Johnson has to play on the third line no matter what. And no matter which way you look at it, we have to play him as a third liner. Um, we have a lot of guys that are like ready to go. It's kind of funny. Like Dewar is like a, a ready-made player to call up. But the funny thing is, it's like we don't even need half of those players because we have the money to afford like really expensive players. Like if we wanted to bring in Sebastian Howe, if we didn't sign any Wells, we could have. We could have totally brought that guy in if we really wanted to. Uh, I like to see the development here of Bear Politzek and uh, uh, Luka Reinen. He's also developing very nicely. Goaltending wise, uh, Blackwood and Aiden Hill will be our tandem once again coming into this upcoming season. I don't think any of our, our prospects really, you know, developed at all. Tara Lugin can play this upcoming season almost. Uh, defensively, he's ready to go, but I think I think he can use another season developing there in Europe. Uh, our goaltending wise, uh, Valtteri Nainen's almost ready, 69 overall, so he'll probably be another two years away before he's really ready. So probably near the end of Blackwood's contract, he'll be possibly ready to go. Um, lineup wise, I think we're gonna go with you know the same way that we did last year. Um, going with that again, I think it's gonna be the best option once again. Um, now I just want to kind of play around with the lines of what combination would possibly be best because I think the way that we are going to have to go here is like that. I guess we'll have to go like that right now is full goal, foodie, line, a Bjorkstrand, McCann, Marichenko. Now the biggest issue I am having right now is offensively. I think we could kick major ass. But how well would we do defensively? You know, like defensively, I don't know. I don't know, especially with McGrado, Johnson. It's going to be a big question with those guys. But I think a guy that we are going to have to trade away is Igor. I just, I don't think he fits anywhere in this team going forward, right? You think about it, even if Line A does, you know, end up moving away, we could just replace him with, you know, Marichenko or, you know, Rutcher or McGrado. We already have two guys that could fill into that spot easily and we wouldn't have to worry about it with Igor he doesn't fit anywhere unless you're going to have him as a, a third liner for the rest of his career and plus we do need another 30 year old guy and we could use somebody that could be very good defensively for this top six here uh for this top nine I mean for this fourth line so I think moving forward we maybe trade away Igor. Tell me guys in the comment section below if we should trade away Igor or not in the next video. That's what we'll probably do. Defensively, I think uh, I think I like it. I, I really do like it. We went with Zach Rowenski last year with Brett Pesci. Um, also, Zach Rowenski is now officially stuck in an 86 overall. So maybe do we look at trade away, you know, with Zach Rowenski? Probably his trade value is massively dropped off uh, than what he used to be. But he's been our top two defenseman for the past little bit now. Um, and he's not going to look to improve at all. So um, defensively, he's going to be a big question mark. Blackwood and Ain Hill will be our tandem going into next year. So uh, yeah, we got a lot of big questions. But I think I'm going to leave it up to the next video. I know you we don't get to see very much in today's video. But we're kind of taking it slow. I, I really do want to be patient with this team. But in the next video, we're going to be doing like a massive simulation uh, throughout the entire season. But I like to see, you know, should we trade away? I like to, I would like to have a little bit more of a thought process of what we should do next with Igor and see what you guys think of what we should do next with Igor. Because should we trade him? You know, we're Of course, we're going to have to trade away one of these guys. It's either a Texier or a Igor that we trade away uh, for the future. And I think it's very obviously that we trade away Igor. And, you know, the biggest question now is what we do with Patrick Laine in his extension because... 
you know, he's going to be asking for big bucks and we don't want to just continue signing them for one year deals because that is very risky to do. And it's not, you know, cost efficient, right? We want to be able to lock up a guy for the future and not have to worry about him. So a lot of big questions here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I think we're going to leave it all in the next video for you guys. Uh, but for right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.